Hey, do you need a 3D character generator that has built-in animations and allows you to create low-poly, pixelated models for your RPG developer balking or other engine games? Well, it's not hard, bro. Not hard at all. It's easy, especially if you're a giga chat like me. All you have to do is check out Darkhand Arts and his 3D pixel character creator, which is linked in the description below. It is $25 USD, and Darkhand has been teasing its development for months in the official Baking Discord server. I've been excited ever since I saw the initial images of the things that this was able to create, and we finally have a version that we can download and play with and make models with right now. And the models work with Baking, and likely with other game engines. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't use a lot of other game engines. So we are going to delve into this tool today and check out what it does and how it does the things that it do. And this is what we are presented with when we first opened the program. Now keep in mind, Darkhand is very actively working on this. There's a lot of stuff that he's planning on adding. I can only imagine by the time you see this video, a lot of what you see here is going to be deprecated or even obsolete. But right now for this version that I am looking at, I don't have any sort of way to drag the edges of the window. There's no maximizing or full screening. So this is the size we get. We're going to zoom in and use this tool. So, looks like a lot of information to digest. Don't worry, you and I, we've got this. Dark and Arts logo in the top dead center. In the top right, we have a link, when you click that, that goes to his Twitter, Sketchfab, and ArtStation, all on his link tree. Not his itch.io? We're going to have to change that. you got to change that, bro. And right now, the settings button doesn't do anything, but this is still fully functional and usable right out of the box. This is the model that we're going to be working with, the base model, and of course we can change the appearance of just this base model, the skin color, as well as the uh, bodily features on it. We can rotate it left and right. Every once in a while in the video, hello, this model has cake. Can I show this on YouTube? Demonetized. Every once in a while, you will see what looks like screen tearing or these little vector lines appearing. Rest assured, this does not appear in the generated final version of your model. It's just something with the program, and I'm sure that eventually, soon, it's going to be worked out to where it doesn't appear in the editor. At the bottom of the window, we have the option to auto spin, and right now it only auto spins in this one direction. Uh, it made me kind of sick, so I left it off, actually. And we have three different default poses that we can view this character in. The T pose that establishes dominance, and the idle pose, which actually includes the idle animation. We also have the walk cycle, so you can get a better idea of what your model's gonna look like while you are dressing them up and changing the different attributes. In the bottom right of the tool is the generate button and we'll click that once we have our model all completely done. On the left side of the screen is where all of the magic happens. We have the ability to add and delete layers. The layers work like a 2D image editing program would. Every time you add a layer, the features that you assign to that layer are going to show up over the top of the layers before it. So everything will just kind of layer over one another. If you've used any 2D character generator program, you get a good idea of how this works exactly. When you click the delete button, only the last layer gets deleted. So keep that in mind. You can't delete any of the layers in the middle, but that shouldn't be an issue. Now it's worth noting our very first layer is skin, which means skin is the type of asset that is assigned to this layer, but you could just as easily assign whatever you wanted as the very first layer. There is an implied order that is recommended to be followed though, because of how these things will look after you've made your character. If you make all of these things, or select from them rather, in order, one after another, they're already ordered in the way that is ideal for the appearance of your character. That'll make sense here in just a moment. So our first layer is skin, and I'd like to change the color so it's not just this white pure white character with gray shadow, we can actually change two channels of color. And that first channel does relate to this white. So we'll click on the one and then we can select anywhere in the color picker. We can change the hue of the color picker as well. So like if I was going to make um, a green character for a goblin, I'll go here, select a green that I think is appropriate. I'll click on the two and that will manipulate the shadow color. So I'll pick a darker green for the shadows. Now I'm loving that already. Now the number in the top left corner tells us what number layer this is. This is just layer one. So the number to the right of the named asset type is how many assets are in that asset type. So there are actually six different skins to choose from. We have female one, female two, which she is stacked. 
female three, which she's a zombie, male one, male two, and male three. Strong person, zombie, really cool to see. You note that the basic mesh doesn't change, it's just the texture applied to the mesh that implies what kind of character it is that changes. The more that you cover this up, the less that, that will actually be relevant, but let's continue. So we'll just hit the plus button to get another layer. When you do this, it's gonna default to skin. And like I said, these layers will cover everything that is underneath them. So it looks like we've been overwritten, but that hasn't happened, don't worry. We just need to change the asset type from skin to ears. And now we can see that our original layer one is still intact. So it's recommended that the layer two asset type is ears. That's why they are number two in the listing. And this is layer number two. We have 12 different ears to choose from. We have bunny ears, we have cat ears, and demon ears, which these are really cute. They, they are basically anime succubus ears, fox ears, human ears, two types of human ears. These have awesome cross earrings, a third set of human ears, a fourth set, long ears for your elves and your gnomes and goblins and such long two these have rings long three silver rings mouse ears <laughs> hello everybody sorry about that i want to make a treasure hunting goblin so we're going to click on the color picker and we're basically going to assign it the same colors that we gave our skin there we go i'm happy with that now let's assign our third layer and we'll change that from skin to face does the layering system make sense yet at this point i think it should here, we can change the color of the eyes. I wish the second color channel would change the color of the sclera. That would be really cool. Maybe that's a suggestion that I can make. We have 11 different faces, so we'll just go through all of them. There's face two, three, more serious, four, five, very cartoony, six, pretty, seven, big eyes, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I like that one very much, but Nil is friendly, so we're going to go with something happy. I like one. I like one a lot. We're going to add another layer. Next, we're going to do hair. And we have eight hair options. I am going to let this one spin automatically so that we can get a good look at all of the hair. I, I really need to give her pants. <laughs> Here is the long hair. That's very cute. Hair three, hair four, hair five. All right, stop spinning. Hair six, hair seven, hair eight. Oh, look, it's emo. I love it. Now, I know Dark Hand has some twin tails on the back burner. Don't leave me hanging. But we're going to go with hair five for nil. Six is underwear, finally, thank God. We have 17 types of underwear. Bloomers, boxers, briefs, feminine one, feminine two, which is topless, feminine three, which is bottomless, feminine four, feminine five, six, seven, long socks, pantyhose, 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 pantyhose striped knee socks now if you decided that you wanted to use more than one of these underwear sets and kind of customize your own set of underwear you can do that if the character's underwear is going to be seen anyway you just have to add another layer assign the under type to it and then choose what you want to see and now i've given her the feminine underwear as well as the striped knee socks together however nil is going to be conservatively dressed so for our next layer we are going to change the head type and head in this case actually refers to the hat. So we've got bunny ears, we've got a cap, which is actually really cute. Two different kinds of caps, a cap worn backwards, both kinds, glasses, glasses two, maid, mask one. Oh, we kind of have a disappearance whenever she blinks. Mask two, mask three, none. Straw hat one. Oh, I really like that actually. Straw Hat 2, Straw Hat 3, Sunglasses, now she's cool. We're going to go with the Straw Hat and uh, just because, just because. And we'll add our next layer. Once you add enough layers, you'll get access to the scroll bar so you can scroll down and manipulate your new layers. In this case, we're going to go with the shirt. We've got Bunny Suit. This character creator was obviously made by a person who was very cultured. Made, Medieval Shirt 1, oh I like that a lot. Sailor uniform, shirt one. I had to change the color to get the accurate, like what the pattern on the shirt actually looks like, if any. Shirt two is checkered. Shirt three is striped. Shirt four is flannel. Uh, T-shirt one and T-shirt two. Time to add another layer. This time we're doing eight for pants. The default is camo pants. So we're going to go ahead and make the pants green just to reflect that camo-ness. Oh, they actually look really good. We have made. 
We have medieval pants, one and two, none, one leg pants, one leg pants two, sailor uniform, that's very cute, short pants, short pants one, and short pants again. The difference is the waist is cut just a little bit lower. We need some halter tops in the shirts to really take advantage of how that looks. All right, time to add another layer. This time layer nine, which is gloves. We have four different gloves to choose from. Bunny girl one, gloves one, gloves two, which were fingerless, and maid one. <laughs> add another layer. Okay, for our 10th layer, we're gonna do shoes. And we have access to five different sets of shoes. We have boots one, boots two, feminine shoe one, sandals, and shoe one. I'm gonna give Nil some boots. For our 11th layer, we have outer, and that gives us a belt, a cat hoodie, which covers up a ton of what we've already made, but is very cute. Flannel one, wait, really? There, it's like Nil stole my flannel. Flannel two, this one's not flannel. <laughs> hoodie one, that's really cute, I like that. Hoodie two, the hood's actually up over the character's head. Really cool, really useful. Hoodie three, this one comes with uh, cannon arms, just really big sleeves. Hoodie four, jacket one, jacket two, oh, I love how those look. Jacket three, jacket four, jacket five, jacket six, suit jacket one, suit jacket two. These should be black for best effect. There we go. Suspender one, oh my goodness. Those are actually cool looking. Tactical vest. One and two. Vest one, nice, nice. Vest two. Vest three. And vest four. I'm gonna give her suspenders because she has lots of bags and stuff hanging off that she likes to put gold in. We're ready for our 12th layer. This gives you access to a cape option and that includes a poncho, one and two. That's it for now. Layer 13 will give you access to a tail. We'll have to spin her around to see the tail appropriately. We have four tails, a bunny tail, a cat tail, a demon tail, and a wolf tail. I love how they're just 2D planes with animation. The 14th and final layer gives you wings. There are three sets of wings. There's angel one, angel two, very cute, and demon one. And they've also got their two color channels, just like everything else. So at the end of the day, you have a fully customized character that you made. And according to Dark Ant, you are allowed to use this tool for commercial projects like games, videos, or more. You can also edit the textures if you want. You can give textures to him and he will add them to the program. You're not allowed to resell any of the characters or the program, and you're not allowed to use this with any NFT related purposes. So I can respect that. So we've got Nil Bog. There's nothing left to do now except generate. So let's click that. While that's generating, let's take a look at the folder structure with this program. We have the Pixel 3D Character Generator data, the Mono Bleeding Edge folder that comes with like every Unity program I've ever downloaded, the generated folder, which comes with our previously generated characters, as well as their texture files that are assigned to them. Files, which I suspect will play a part in perhaps a future save and load system. And examples. Kazuma is included as an example. Lovely. Darkhand also says there will be more clothing and animations, a save system with gallery, importing custom clothing pieces, and a Steam version with workshop support. All of that sounds awesome. All right, so once we have generated our character, which on my machine took about 30 seconds as of this build, we will have a character.fbx file and the texture.ping in the generated folder. Now, if you generate another character at this point, it's gonna overwrite whatever's in here. So if you like your results, I would take this stuff and go put it somewhere else. Go back it up, rename it perhaps. And there she is, Nil Bog in my Bakking world, looking adorable, looking fantastic. I love the look of the low poly and the low resolution texture. I think that these characters are going to fit perfectly in a lot of different Bakking projects. And the animations are actually included. Uh, they have a lot more animations than just the standard walk, T-pose, and idle, like you saw in the generator. I'll go over the animations real quick. So we have the T-pose, 
you might you might need it if you're trying to make a character that establishes dominance that's total immersion interact one where she bends down and works with something on the ground interact two where she's working with something in front of her the jump up pose which will go into effect whenever she jumps on the map the landing pose which will be whenever she is falling on the map lay down whenever she needs a nap look at that little booty tooch that is adorable Lay down too, just relaxing, or perhaps knocked out. Shouldn't have tried to raid the dragon's treasure hoard. This is the run animation. Looks great, looks great. The sit animation. Another sit animation, suitable for use with chairs, bar stools, and the like. Your weight animation, so her idle. And the walk animation, all of which look really good. She's got a bit of a swagger to her, actually. And now she's waving goodbye, as in it's the end of the video. Uh, please stay tuned. I will be sure to have a full tutorial on how to get your characters into Bakin. That is a bit of a process, but we can go over it, and it's only going to get easier and better from this point forward. So, until then, have a great rest of your day. Comment anything you'd like down below, and thanks so much for watching. See you next time, guys.